all right welcome back everybody thank you for joining me this fine fine evening i know you're all are so excited to this cross out news here today but unfortunately i am sick because your mom just gives me such great head i keep screaming all of my <laughs> no, i'm just kidding that's rude of me to do why would i say such heinous things but welcome back everybody Today we're taking a look at this brand new cross out news that has recently emerged, well I guess it really hasn't recently emerged here, but it's been up for a hot second here and I kind of wanted to go over it here. It's mostly about the brand new season that is coming out, this is coming right after the brand new founder season. See we got about another 17 days here for me, so hopefully we get a little bit going on here. But first let's talk about the brand new season here, so of course this is going to be the new section. We're going to leave it down below in the description if you want to get yourself a little bit of information about this later on. You can also just go ahead and find it on the website. Feel free to go there. But the new thing here, we got the brand new fortress map here. So let's go ahead and read over this. In the new update with the new season, we'll be ready to present you the updated map fortress. The third and last map of the list of maps will be removed in rotation to be redesigned. Let's look at the changes that will appear in this location. And then I'll give you a couple of nice pictures here. Let's just go ahead and pop these open and see what they look like here. So they don't look that bad, to be honest. I do like the inclusion of what appears to be a giant water wheel. It does make sense for maybe a power perspective. It does look kind of nice. And I do like the inclusion of older styles of architecture within this fortress map here. Definitely got some nice grading and some nice towers here. Definitely gives it a much more of an industrial, almost military-like vibe, which I guess makes sense for a fortress, quote-unquote. But very nice. Scaling environment object will also be changed to become closer to the real ones. The mass vegetation will be updated not only to improve its quality compared to the old version of the location, but also implement a familiar feature with semi-transparent silhouettes of large bushes and trees to be more comfortable game. So it'd be kind of like people sneaking in there and popping a shot off. All the thing is, considering that a lot of cars within Crossout are comically large, not very like muted color palettes, and don't have quite the same texture as a lot of the environmental decal. It doesn't really actually behoove you to kind of sit behind a lot of these decals and pop shots off, but I guess I still applaud their efforts of trying to do that. Not to mention, too, with the fact that a lot of these cars and a lot of tanks can go in an excessive neighborhood of like 100 kilometers an hour, 80 kilometers, 70 kilometers an hour. I mean, you get some pretty fast vehicles here, and especially on some of these smaller maps where you're not shooting like a mile ahead, it's not really necessary to do such a thing. To be fair, hovers are still going to be the, like the kings of sniping and peeking, so... Using vegetation, mm, cool. But so far, I do appreciate the map. It does look quite nice. And I do like any sort of inclusion of new architecture or map designs within a game. I do appreciate if they would have actually kept the old designs too as like a historical context, but I understand if they're concerned about it being potentially unbalanced uh, for competitive scene. So even then, they probably could have just kept it in the normal rotation for the uh, base game, non-competitive, casual even. But we'll have to see about that. These are now start the battle, other side of the destroy town and military base, respectively. What happened to this location? Whose base was this? We're gonna find out soon. Ooh, so each one of these masks comes with a new lore aspect to it. All right. We redesigned this location as important to make better use of the space and solve uh, the problems you reported to us. We reduced the spaces on the edges of the map that were hardly used by players. But at the same time, we expanded the number of passages that previously only could be used by uh, relatively small armored vehicles and vehicles with a low power score. All right, so they probably widened up a bit there, so a larger chunk of tanks could actually roll through there with minimal issues. But at the same time, too, there is nothing bad with having very low uh, or very narrow thresholds for vehicles to get into, because it does encourage certain vehicle designs that people do have to account for when they're making anything. Making a map that is generally applicable to all armored vehicles, not necessarily is the most interesting of maps, because in that case, you kind of just design maps with more and more of the sameness in mind. If maps that actually do have restricted access areas, that actually does force you to do something that you are not comfortable to do. If you're just going to be in a type of map that's always going to be comfortable to every single vehicle type, to every single strategy, then eventually it's just going to be the one dominant strategy that's going to be in mind. There's not a lot of the separate places on the map which could interfere with the movement of players. For example, various angles and stones that cause armor fields to get trapped and stuck. To be fair, happens with a lot of stuff. Not really an issue with players per se. I found it more of an issue with bots, especially with more narrow spaces. Bots always manage to get caught on a lot of like environmental debris and whatnot. So actually changing that around here might help out ever so slightly. Next, we got a new legendary rocket launcher here, which honestly, it does look pretty dang badass. I gotta say that triple rocket style there, the triple tubes with all these nice angular I'm not even sure bent uh, heat pipes, I'm not sure what they're supposed to be, coming out of it. it. Makes it look very pneumatic, very interesting, and hopefully it actually has a rotation style animation when it fires that will be pretty sweet looking. 
Not to mention the black and silver silhouette there will make it very appealing to a lot of very sleek looking builds here. Very nice. Let's actually read about it here. Uh, the rockets in this weapon are not homing ones. You'll definitely uh, be appreciated by fans of the Wasp, Locust, Snowfall, and Cricket. Ooh, so an unguided rocket launcher. All right. As you get this picture, the rocket launcher is somewhat reminiscent of the Snowfall, but its own unique form factor. True, the Snowfall did have, I think, that triple barrel slot design, but it was a lot more wide and didn't have a, well, it looks to be a full 360 rotation. The rocket launcher's perk will increase the damage and explosion impulse of each subsequent rocket with a single burst. The bonus last, uh, the last rocket in the burst will be enough so that the lucky hit can disrupt all planes of lightweight enemy approaching you. Interesting. So it increases each subsequent rocket within a single burst and the explosion impulse and damage. So if you're very accurate with this thing, you actually can increase the overall damage and explosion radius of this rocket. So let me think about that. It could be good and bad depending on the trajectory, the speed, and the accuracy of these rockets, as well as the spread. And these things are very fast, very agile, and you can usually hit your target pretty easily with something like this, then I can see this being a very big issue. Especially in close scenarios, because I think they did reduce the explosion radius and damage cars deal to themselves when they ram into somebody. So you can ironically see this in a lot of ramming builds using a rocket like this, and that actually becomes the case. I'm not quite sure if that will become the case, but I can see hovers at these with one mounted above and one mounted below being very, very, very deadly. Especially if you try to incorporate a Nova onto this to make it very difficult to actually see where they're coming, or, or not so difficult to see where they're coming, but to reduce the damage and uh, kind of poking potential of them. That could be a bit of an interesting thing. Or maybe they could just throw in a Beholder or Chameleon module too to make these things very effective at close range to kind of close that gap and actually get the full perk off there. We'll have to see how that'll turn out too. Although I could even see this being very effective on a tank build with a bunch of Cerberuses and a reload perk on it, just so they can actually fire off as many as humanly possible to strip down vehicles as soon as possible too. Although I guess it just depends on the durability of these weapons too. And this rocket launcher is historically like the other rocket launchers that are not very durable. I can see this being a potential issue too. That with it being a fully rotating turret too, there's a potential chance for it not being a very fast rotator, which in that case it may disincentivize you actually getting close up there. Although it could potentially be solved by something like the oppressor. But we'll have to see about that. Uh, I should also mention too that this is actually... Uh, applies one over another in a spiral pattern without losing altitude over a distance here. So you fire it straight and it's good. So it's not like the Cricket or the Wasp or anything like that where it actually has a drop to it over time. This is just perfectly straight the entire time. Similar to that, I guess, maybe of the Quasar. But pretty interesting rocket launcher there. Definitely looking forward to this new season and I do like the stylings of the season too. Sleek things, not too bad in my opinion. Especially with a lot of the armor pieces they've been recently releasing with these new uh, updates, it actually does make sense for them to make it a bit more sleek. Because I think a lot of the armor pieces they've been releasing with this new season are quite sleek. Like, these are very sleek. They're on some more sleek parts like this, and I guess it can make a very uh, large amount of sense to actually have that. But, alright, let's see what the other news piece here has to offer. Alright, so this is the second patch here. This has been released a couple of days ago, like I said. All these are available on the news section of the Crossout website, and I'll put a link to it down below if you want to take a look for it yourself. But let's go ahead and take a look here. New season in Crossout Part 2, Relic Shotgun, the details of the season. Ooh boy. So first things first, we got the brand new single shot shotgun. So it's to be similar to that, I believe, of the Nidog, Fafnir, and Junkabo. Uh, let me double check just to make sure that I am saying these correctly here. Yep, Nidhogg, Fafnir, and the Junk Bow. So these are the single shot shotguns. So it's to be similar to that quality of a breaker, but now just with the Nidhogg variety. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how this works. And it definitely has a very interesting, almost fish-like look to it. You do have teeth here, you got nice eye structure. Definitely what appears to be some sort of fin structure here with a kind of like armor plating that's going over time. And it looks like we have a little spigot here for what appears to be a flame and a gas tank here implies that too. Plus with it being looking like it's a bunch of scrap metal here, it looks like it's going to be a very interesting and kind of like a lunatic style shotgun here. I've mentioned the weapon a few times as part of our Q&A sessions on live streams. To be honest, I haven't dealt with too many live streams recently. I don't do a whole bunch of that. I watch a lot of YouTube content and I watch this stuff at times two speed. I got stuff to do. So I got no time for that. <laughs> And now it's time for us to get a closer look at it. The shotgun appear in game with the launch of the new season, but it won't be part of the season's reward scale. Of course, because it's a relic gun, they don't want to give anyone here a $500 gun for free, especially if it's fused too. Oh my god. No, these type of relic guns are always going to be the exclusive 
rewards for those who either spend way too much money in this game or who have played a lot of competitive. The shotgun will be appear in the game part of the season, and that's rewards, blah blah blah. You'll be able to craft it like the other relics in the game with the engineer's secret workshop bench. Okay, well, question is, is the crafting on this going to be very limited? Well, I guess it's not really, because it's not a part of the reward structure of the other guns. So it shouldn't be limited in its crafting, because if you don't know, a lot of the weapons and stuff that you can actually craft in a brand new season can only be crafted during the season itself. So if you wanted to, say, craft the brand new legendary gun here, you can only craft it during the season. So I wonder if that's still going to be the case for this Relic Shotgun here. But since it's not incorporated into the reward structure, it shouldn't be, but... Hmm, let's just see about that. Right, they share the parameters yet. Working on refining and improving the shotgun is still in practice. We can tell you about its perk. Exciting. Having more of the pellets from the first shot hit the target, the next shot will be a combined shot. This means the enemy will first be hit with the shot that heats up the parts, and then the, the shot that does the main damage. Interesting. So I guess it'll be kind of like, will it be similar to that? The mass is on, we got to click twice where it's like tonk tonk, or will it just literally be one after the other, which ch -ch -ch, like a kind of fast uh, salvo that only takes one click. So if that's the case, it'll still be interesting. But in that case, it's similar to that of like a Gravistar and just a traditional Nidhogg. So if that's the case, that'll be quite nice. And doesn't actually be appear to be related to the speed of the vehicle here too. So you won't have to constantly worry about making sure you're in like the 70 to 80 kilometer an hour range to actually utilize this perk. Because if I remember correctly, you do need to be quite fast to actually use these things. Yeah, so you get extra, what, reload speed, 20% efficiency at 80 kilometers an hour. So without having to use that speed there, that is quite nice. Any sort of speed-related perk is quite difficult to utilize. It might be a bit easier for a boss, but for people that actually have to sit there and flap their mouse or controller around to actually turn around, definitely not exotic. Next, we have a brand new special frontal machine gun here, which does look quite nice here. I do like it. It is a very industrial vibe here. Although it almost reminds me that of the... There was a skin that you could get for the Defender that was a very Aztec theme, but very blocky. Looks similar to that, except instead of the Aztec theme, you kind of have more just sheet metal. Kind of looks like a car's front bumper with a machine gun strapped to it. Kind of nice. But it's essentially the same thing as the M29 Protector, but it has a reduced overall... I guess you could say net value that of perk. So this one actually gives you what 2% damage resistance stacking up to 10 times. My guess is this will only be 1% stacking up to 10 or 5 times. So in that case, it'll be probably between somewhere to 5 to 10% damage reduction as opposed to 20% reduction. If I had to guess there, just to make it so it's not too powerful. But still though, a special frontal machine gun that has damage resistance baked into it of over 10%, that is quite nice. Quite nice. Any special machine gun is supposed to be like the optimal uh, power score to damage ratio that you're supposed to get for any gun. So I can see this thing being very dominant, especially for middle to higher end gameplay. Next we have the epic module here that increases damage resistance for attached parts here. So this actually sounds pretty interesting, although it sounds just like a weird version for people to get the uh, mechanist perk that you used to get from the previous season, but now into a vehicle part by itself. And I'm actually curious if the Mechanist and this brand new module both actually stack their damage resistance. So let's read here. For the new season, new mechanics uh, will appear in cross. With this help, uh, special welding points pins will be added to a number of parts. Parts attached to at least one of these points will receive bonuses. Let's go look at how this is going to work. For example, with the module from the upcoming season, the special welding points of this module and its corners. Any part attached to at least one of these such points will receive an increased resistance to all types of damage. Uh, this way, depending on the displacement of the modules on your assembly, you can extend the lifetime of your structural parts, weapons, cabins, etc. Of course, you can't increase the resistance indefinitely. Only one such module can be mounted on a car. Whatever. So, essentially, it's essentially the mechanics perk from the previous train cabin, now strapped onto a single module. So, it'll be kind of interesting to see how that actually turns out. And two, with this mechanics perk here that scales up based on your maximum HP here, will this actually conflict with the current module or will it stack with the current module? Can you actually exceed the 25% bonus and go into like the 45, 35, 50% damage range? Because if that's the case, then I can see this being a must have for a lot of highly uh, vulnerable parts that easily get shot off, or just to make parts that are already incredibly hard to shoot off even more hard to shoot off here. I mean, if you can stack the mechanist and this module, and you stack it with something like a very brittle frontal machine gun here, like this brand new, I didn't get even thrown on the Punisher, but if you're throwing on something like the Vindicator, oh my god, 
I mean, the Vindicator with the Mechanist, that module, and its perk, this thing could easily reach an excess of like 100% damage resistance here. Now, even in that case, it would still only make its effective durability from 225 up there into like the 450 range there. So it still wouldn't be the highest HP weapon by any sort of the imagination here, but it would still be incredibly high. And for any sort of high HP weapon already, like these Mastodons or these Mammoth Cannons here, this can be an incredibly huge help. Imagine the Mammoth with that 35% damage reduction plus that armor module there. That could easily bump this into the 2k range with a little bit of fusions. So you can easily get some pretty hefty, hefty numbers on there. Not to mention too, this doesn't include parts that are attached to it that uh, include structural parts that are protected. So you can effectively get a lot more mileage out of these parts here, especially those that you can easily conceal. So those that you can easily conceal, I could definitely see becoming a huge benefactor of such a little perk here. So I'm definitely going to be kind of interested to see how that turns out in the end. If it becomes super beneficial to have, I can see it almost being a mainstay for a lot of heavier builds out there. Oh, it's really hard to say. There's a lot of good perks when it comes to a lot of these heavier cabins. I mean, the humpback's damage increase, the Cerberus's reload speed, the other one that increases your power, maybe not as much as useful, but I mean, there's still a lot of good perks, and anything that increases your resistances here is always going to be highly, highly, highly desirable. It also appears that with this module here, it said it's only going to be increasing resistances in areas that have the pin contact. So it looks like at maximum, you could only have eight things being enhanced by this extra durability here. Because it doesn't appear to be any in the back, only in the front end of this thing and only at eight contact points. So it won't be able to you know, strap on like 17 different armor parts to get a lot of resistance. But still, eight points of contact resistance are going to be quite nice here. And I wonder if this is actually going to stack with a cabin. So can you actually make your cabin considerably more resistful? That'll be interesting to see if that actually turns out. I can definitely see this being slapped into the back of a car, and then you just slap your weapon onto that and the mechanics to get as much damage or bonus as possible. So let's see if that's the case. If that's the case, then, oh yeah, this bad boy is going to be perfect. But I think that's pretty much everything here involving the season. So what do you guys think about the season? Let me know down below. And that guys, I want to thank you all for joining us. And see you guys next time. Bye-bye.